So all the other Harvard MDs are beginning lucrative practices. I remember as late as the early 80s, you were talking about how you, you, your washing machine didn't work or something. I mean, yeah. basically, you, you are leading a sort of I didn't have the money existence. to fix it, was the <laughs> point of the story. Right, I was a freelance writer, mostly making my living as a freelance writer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had written a few books, but I was, being a journalist, I financed my travels through journalism. I did some consulting work. Um, I, I didn't really practice medicine then, although patients began showing up at my doorstep. Uh, they had read things I'd written or heard me talk, and they wanted my advice. And I discovered that I was uh, very good at a few things. One was diagnosis, uh, which I mostly do by listening to people carefully and asking questions. And uh, I'm also good at what I call being a therapeutic marriage broker, knowing who goes with whom, how to arrange happy alliances between patients and practitioners, whether that's in the conventional world or beyond it. Now, where does Arizona enter the picture? Why are you here? Uh, my car broke down here. <laughs> and that was what year was that? 1973. Uh, it was in February of a very warm, wet winter. The desert was in full bloom. It took six weeks to get, it was an English Land Rover that I'd driven to South America. It took six weeks to get parts, and I never left. Uh, so I would never imagine that I'd be living in Arizona. It's turned out to be a very good place for me. Aside from your car breaking down, why else are you in Arizona? Well, I was, I was really uh, entranced by the natural beauty here and the, uh, I, I'd say, the, the mystery uh, beauty of the desert, um, the flora and fauna here, and um, especially having grown up in a row house in Philadelphia, you can imagine you know, how spectacular Arizona looked.